Nine Democrats in Congress are joining a GOP effort to deregulate the banks. Now, as we know, the GOP has been pretty aggressive in trying to scale back Dodd-Frank, which was a pretty mediocre regulatory effort by Democrats under the Obama administration. And of course, it followed the economic meltdown back in 2008. But now some Democrats are saying, no, 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 I mean, maybe we want to make it a little easier for these banks to give out some loans and these questionable mortgages that led to the economic meltdown in 2008. So let me give you the details. Politico reports that nine Democrats, enough needed to pass the bill with Republicans in the months to come, are co-sponsoring the package, which would scale back rules for many banks. The legislation was negotiated by Senate Chairman Mike Crapo, or Crapo, um, no. Crapo sounds right though, with a group of red state Democrats who have been working for years to ease regulations they say are stifling lending. Oh, those poor banks. I mean, right. they lend you all the money. It's just that we're stifling them. This is, oh, this is so bad. And I, look, I, I keep, I pay a lot of attention to the housing market and subprime mortgages. Subprime mortgages are already a problem, okay? Uh, this is going to lead to subprime mortgages on steroids. Let me give you a few more details on this um, proposal. The new negotiations were driven by Democrats who are up for reelection in states that Trump carried in last year's election. So these are people who are concerned that they won't get reelected because these are Trump loving uh, states. Uh, Heidi Heidkamp is an example from North Dakota, John Tester of Montana, um, and Joe Donnelly. So Virginia's Mark Warner also participated in these negotiations. The the most controversial element of this proposal would lift regulations for several banks with more than 50 billion in assets, a threshold that subjects lenders to stricter government oversight under Dodd-Frank. So the idea here was if a bank is you know, too big to fail, well, we need to keep a closer eye on them so we don't have the same scenario that we had in 2008. We don't wanna to have to keep bailing these big banks out. So as a result, if it's a bigger bank that has more in assets, they have to abide by stricter regulations. They want to increase the cap from $50 billion to $250 billion. So it would essentially allow more of these banks to get by without having to deal with the stringent regulations, okay? So Crapo and moderate Democrats agreed to move the threshold to $250 billion over a phase in period, a change that could help several large banks across the country. Okay, so let's clarify a bunch of things. So number one, uh, to be fair, the one thing it does not apply is to banks above $250 billion in assets. So those are the, the mega banks like mm -hmm. JP Morgan and Bank of America. It does not apply to them. Uh, but uh, banks and, and credit card companies, et cetera, between 50 and $250 billion is are still gigantic. Mm -hmm. And that's not the only thing that the this uh, proposal does. Because it's that's a very important part of it, but the other part is, there's a provision in there that would scale back the frequency of the bank stress test. Now the stress test lets you know, are all the banks, including the big, the biggest banks, are they taking too many risks? So now here the legislators say, eh, do we really have to check that they're taking too much risk? Now remember, they're allowed to gamble with your depositor money. Before, when we had Glass-Steagall, which was imposed in the Roosevelt era and taken away by Republicans and Bill Clinton, you, you could not, gamble with depositor money that was separate from your investment bank. Now the investment bank side of the bank can go, oh, well, thank you very much for depositing that. I'd like to use that to gamble on derivatives. That's right. And they're allowed to do that. So you need the stress test at a bare minimum to check in to see if they're taking too much risk. And now Republicans and corporate Democrats have decided, Nah, do we really need those stress tests? No, this is a disaster because think about it. When you invest your money with a bank or deposit your money with a bank, you do so understanding that a certain amount, up to a certain amount is FDIC insured, meaning that the government insures it. If something goes terribly wrong, the government will will step in and make sure that you get some portion of that money back. Now, right now, I think the number is $250,000, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason why I mention that is because who do you think is going to be on the line when banks do too many risky things and then they're about to go under? 
It's the taxpayers. Where do you think the government gets that money to insure your investments in these banks? So this is setting up another financial collapse. This is setting up another big bailout. It's a complete and utter disaster. And look, to me, the relevant part about this is the fact that you have nine Democrats who are like, yeah, this sounds great. This sounds like something we definitely want to do. And it, Democrats don't understand why people are leaving the party, why people don't like them, don't trust them, don't consider them the party that looks out for the little guy anymore. It's because of BS like this that goes on. So let me hit both sides because they wholly deserve it. So the the Republicans will uh, go around saying, "Oh, now if we just had more uh, freedom at the bank level, they could do <laughs> innovations. <laughs> when the innovations are what collapsed the economy in the first place, innovation doesn't help you, the innovation is, what other crazy derivative can I come up with to gamble with your money? So it's it's preposterous and they, almost every Republican at the national level is pro banks and pro bailouts. They'll pretend, oh no, not for a bailout, no. Really, what is, as Anna pointed out, what's the FDIC? If there's, if there's a banking collapse, the government will protect your money up to $250,000, that's a bailout. Yes, it bails you out, but it, it, it allows the, uh, the banks to gamble with that money because they know that it is government insured. Mm -hmm. So that's preposterous and the Republicans know it. That's not capitalism, that's not freedom, that's not any of the, the cute little catchphrases that they use. And they know it. And so when they deregulate the banks, they say, go ahead, gamble with other people's money, we got your back. Now to the Democrats. So they use these, these nine corporatist Democrats, use the excuse that they're mainly in red states that Trump won. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You think it's a populist position <laughs> to, to be pro giant banks? That you say, oh, well, the, Donald Trump ran to say, oh, the global financial interests are screwing you over. That's how yeah. he won the election. Yep. That's and right. now you think the way to win in red states is to say that global financial interests are awesome? How many ads did Trump run against that? How many times did he show Lloyd Blankfein? How many times did he say Hillary makes speeches to Goldman Sachs and Ted Cruz is bought by Goldman Sachs? Now his cabinet is littered with Goldman Sachs and he was a goddamn liar, okay? But that's how he won the election, by saying that he's against the banks. He said he would take away tax loopholes for the hedge fund guys. He didn't do any of it, but that's how he won. So Heidi Heitkamp and Joe Donnelly and Mark Warner, who was in a state that Hillary Clinton won anyway and has no excuses, don't pretend you're doing it for, for reasons of Appealing to voters, you're doing it to appeal to donors. You're all bought and you're all corrupt. If you like this video, you'll love the whole TYT network. Check it out at tytnetwork.com slash join.